Hi everybody. Oh god, I'm orange. I look like the president. I gotta fix this. Here we go. That's much better. Just tweet out that we're live, which I'm sure is very interesting to the people watching this on a delay. But I accidentally erased my tweet before I, uh, before I mashed go on the stream. I'm solo today because I've never done a solo stream from the couch before and I just want to see if I can do it so I don't panic so much about booking guests every single week. Bridges and Crystal are here. How you guys doing? Bridges says, I was sitting here for four hours. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I got my bowl of chips too. Sweet. I'm gonna be playing Metroid today. Man plays with phone, the live stream. Oh, this is painfully slow. No typos? No typos. All right. I have announced to all five of our Twitter followers, or however many I have, that we're live. Live and taking questions. How's the sound, guys? Sound is good, apparently. This is one of my favorite games of all time. There were certain games I liked as a kid more than other games, and I couldn't really explain why. But Metroid was one of them, Zelda was one of them, and really what it came down to for me is that if I just have levels, like say a Mario game would, I feel less connected to the game. So Metroid, you had this whole big world and you could go, you know, you were encouraged to visit new places, explore, and then revisit places you'd gone. Which made it feel a lot different than most other games. but you start out with this just pitiful weapon. And you're encouraged to go explore the world. The thing is, if you continue in this game, you always start with, with 30 life. <laughs> so you couldn't just... You couldn't just quit and keep playing. You had to find, you know, really in order to make this work, you had to learn where all of the energy pickups are. Because energy upgrades that let you carry more also fill up your life, and literally nothing else in the game does. They just give you five or ten energy. So while this game had a password system, it was kind of useless. Unless you already knew what you were doing. This remains one of my favorite songs in video gaming history. And when I played Metroid Prime for the first time... 
you land on this this beautiful like forest planet and just this gentle violin starts up and it's this this tune kind of slow and off in the background and I got I popped huge because like most people my age I'm a sucker for nostalgia Though when things rely too heavily on it, I just feel pandered to. And I don't like that either. says, oh, the memories, yep. I believe there's an energy tank further to my right, but I don't want it yet. Yeah, maybe I do. And maybe I'm also wrong. I don't think there's an energy tank over there. I changed my mind. That's, that's a different level. Yeah. A different area. This guy won't materialize until I get this, but I want it. Given that I'm by myself and nobody is engaging in conversation with me, I'm leaving that up to y'all. I will answer any question, no matter how inane. Remember Captain and the Game Master, I do. I haven't tried to go back and rewatch it because a lot of things from my childhood that I loved are just terrible. And I remember that none of the representations of the characters in the games, even then I was like, this is all wrong. They don't they don't act they wouldn't act like this. Mother Brain was basically a sassy woman. And not a big scary robot computer brain machine. What was more interesting about Captain N to me later, as I grew older and started to understand the, you know, copyright and whatnot, is that they, they got licenses from, like, different companies. Like... Mega Man was Capcom. Super Mario Brothers Super Show is so horrible. <laughs> Alright. That may be true, but Captain Lou Albano could sure do one hell of a Mario. Bridges is back. What did I miss? I got a better beam weapon. And your mom and I talked about nost nostalgia... TV. Ishmael Wang says original Metroid, so hardcore. We'll see. We'll see if I still got it.
that enemy down at the bottom of the screen. That is a clue. One I didn't get until I was much older. But that's the kind of thing you gotta watch for in Metroid, is little touches like that. Hope you guys get your tech problems worked out soon. I'm, I need things to talk about. Something's going on with a phone. I'm not quite sure what. Never mind, working now. Good. Crystal asks, did you beat Metroid 2? I got... Okay, I never could. Too many of the corridors look the same. And I'd get lost. But they're remaking it for the 3DS. I'm pretty excited about that. And there was a fan remake I played that was really good. Never beat that either. Ishmael Wang says, yeah, I wish they'd put it on the Switch, too. I know, right? Dr. Mrs. My Ex-Wife got, got our 3DS in the divorce. And now I'm like, I don't, I don't want to buy a whole new one. I just got the Switch. I just got their new portable. I don't want to go backwards a generation. Crystal says, I beat it on the school bus. Yeah, I bet you did. You were better at most games than I was. And you were more persistent. <laughs> My problem with Metroid 2 always was... Uh, I'd, I'd put it down for too long. So I'd get pretty far in the game, and then I wouldn't play for like three weeks or four weeks, and then I wouldn't remember where anything was. And I just want to restart. It's over here, isn't it? There it is. Crystal says, perhaps overly persistent. Yeah, definitely. But after that, you know, three, four weeks, I'd, I'd turn it back on, and I'd just be like, meh. So, I have achieved early ice beam. You're not supposed to get this till way later. But there's a secret one hanging out here. And now I'm going to go for early various suits. So I can spend most of the game taking half damage.
Metroid is very reliant on, or very, very much always embraced sequence breaking. Is if you're if you know where everything is, you can you can make the game a lot easier on yourself. And if you know some tricks and explo exploits like like bomb jumping, like you can just bomb like that. I don't know if you can do it in this game. I've never had to. Uh, but you can just jump like that with your bombs to get places you shouldn't be able to go yet. What Metroid was next after Super Metroid? We didn't get a Metroid from Super Metroid all the way until Metroid Fusion and Metroid Prime, which were released on the same day. We, we missed the entire 64, you know, 32 and 64-bit console generations with just no Metroid at all. Metroid, even to this day, really isn't that big in Japan compared to how big it is here. And even though it sells big here, they're a Japanese company, so they kind of don't give a shit. Which is why they keep outsourcing the making of Metroid games to American companies. Which I'm fine with, because the one Metroid game they made over there recently was that shit-awful one for the Wii where they made Samus a fucking whiny victim of postpartum depression. It was just the worst piece of storytelling and just the character assassination. It was... It was shit awful. They took the most badass bounty hunter in the galaxy and made her a mopey, whiny, emo... Oh, God. The Metroid Prime 4 was just announced. And we get that remake of Metroid 2. So, here's hoping for the future. Because we didn't have a Metroid game last console generation either. I just... Wow, I just rolled right past that somehow. <laughs> Did you try Metroid Zero? It's one of my favorite Metroid games. It's the remake of this game... ...on Game Boy Advance. No! Okay, I bungled this up. So what I gotta do is I gotta get him up into that secret alcove. Which he does. And if, uh, I could do that better. No, I did this all wrong. Metroid Zero is fantastic. It also gives us the origin story for the... What the for the crashed ship that we see in later on in Super Metroid. And it turns out, spoiler alert, we crashed it. <laughs> why... Why is he not pathing up the hole anymore? Bridges says, I'm not spamming this time. Yeah, that, that's fine. It's not like, you know, the chat is, is super populous. Go. Go up there. I goofed this up somehow. I don't know how. I don't know what I did. Why? Why? Super Metroid had the best music, Crystal says. I, I like most Metroid music. I'm gonna try coming in from the other way. That green guy, though, <laughs> says Bridges. Yeah, I got a guy. Got to get him to fly up this hole. That's my whole mission now. Oh god! Oh god! He's in here with me. There's, there's just no winning.
He went up there every time until until now. I don't know what. Is it based on where I'm standing? What is it? What is this based on? Oh God! It's the no. I hate that. Enemies get. Okay, he would have gone up there that time. So it's definitely based on my position. Oh, no, I'm trapped in there with the guy again! Ah! I need some life. Ishmael Wang says, I think it might be based off if the door is partially open. I'm gonna die. The door is partially open or not when he bounces off of it. Okay, so have I been... Maybe if I do that one. No. God, this just starts me in a position to lose life, and there's no way out of it. Sorry, guys, I kicked the tripod. Sorry, folks, I kicked the tripod. Uh, I literally said you were gonna die, you're gonna die. Yeah, I know, I'm aware. <laughs> you were not wrong. Okay, so that time... I think you've got the right idea here. If I keep doing this, I change when he comes up. Let's keep it closed that time. Got him! Okay. I gotta get myself stuck in here. Yahtzee. Look at that. Boom! You are way not supposed to get here until so much later in the game. I need some life, so let's... Let's do this. Still down a whole life bar, but now that I got the ice, I can go get another one. Must be dehydrated because water tastes really good today. <laughs> no. Okay, now I'm just now I'm just angry at this one. Do I know all the tricks to finish... Do I know all the tricks to this game? No. There are ways to glitch your way into, like, secret worlds, people called them, when really what you were doing is loading... Uh, tricking the game into loading the wrong parts of... Wrong, uh, of wrong, wrong parts of itself into, into RAM. 
There's a whole series of videos of people who do things like that. Like, reprogram Super Mario from within the game. I don't know how to do that kind of stuff, but I do know how to get most of the things early and finish this game fairly quickly. I'm not going to be in the speedrunning top 10. I'm not even going to be in the speedrunning top 50, but for me, it, you know, I can, I can beat this game in an afternoon, and that's pretty good. Oh, yeah, I'm trapped in there with the... Bridges says, y'all must be druggies, because water doesn't have a taste. <laughs> That's kind of my point. Is that water, which notoriously doesn't really have much of a taste, tastes good, which usually means, holy crap, you're, you're dehydrated. More missiles. More secrets. This one... Yeah, there we go. Oh god. No, I just filled up my life. Look at that. I've still got some of it. I don't have all of it, but I still have some of it. He said, just before getting completely wasted by that big dragonfly enemy. I don't know what those are called. I didn't obsessively read the instruct, read and reread and reread the instruction manual for this game because I didn't have it. So unlike with Zelda, I don't know what all these little things are called. This one, but the next one of that screen is a trap. It has that same that same hole you can blow with your bombs and the same fake lava that doesn't actually hurt you, but if you fall through, it's just straight down and, it, and it's a nightmare to get back up. Let's do a few more upgrades before we go to... Before we go to Crade. There's also, to answer your question, Crystal, there is a way to sneak an enemy into... There's an area right at the beginning of the game where you see statues of two monsters, and there are statues that I'll have to beat later. Or, the mo they're monsters I'll have to beat later, not statues. And then the statues blink, and you shoot them, and they move up, and then a bridge forms, and you go to the last area of the game. And it's neat that you can see that from the beginning of the game. 
but you don't know what it means and you don't really so later on you can kind of be like oh wait didn't i see these guys in that room but there's a way to sneak in a, a flying enemy in there and freeze it and access the the end of the game like right now and i have never been able to do that nor would i be able to beat turian the end of the game with this little equipment Oh god. There's just no getting out of that one. Game Genie would fast beat it. Yeah, of course. And I'm talking without cheating. Without altering the game's code with a hexadecimal editor. <laughs> You raise an interesting philosophical question. Because to me, especially when I was a kid, getting to the end of a game meant I beat it, no matter how I did so. So, you know, if you use the warp zones to get through Super Mario Brothers, did you really beat the game? And to my kid mind, yeah, absolutely I'd beaten the game. I saw the ending. But then if I use a cheat code in, say, Godzilla for the NES, if you use the code uh, start to end, you just see the ending of the game. Did I then beat the game? <laughs> You'd have to ask kid me. Nope, did not get high enough. I think I'm doing this the stupid way. But I'm gonna keep doing it. Bridges says, I love cheese. Everyone loves cheese. It's so good. I literally cannot eat cheese without getting violently ill. I have a very sad dairy allergy. Which prevents me from enjoying, enjoying anything made from milk. I'm not getting up here. There it is. Crystal says up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA. Select start, yes. We were playing uh, Konami game. Oh, wow. What is this? I don't remember this. Oh, that's where I'm supposed to get the ice beam. Durr. Oh, this is good news. Those guys normally shoot fire. And for some reason, every once in a while when you, you load a game, they don't. And it seems like if they don't in one room, they don't for the rest of the game. That'll be one major inconvenience we don't have to worry about later. Bridges says, what? Lactose intolerant? I don't know how to spell it. Yes, I'm lactose intolerant, but I also have a dairy allergy. It actually kind of provokes an autoimmune response in my body, and uh, I get arthritic. So all of my bones hurt all of the time, and especially my joints, for several years. I don't see a way out of this. There is no way for me to get up there. And I had no idea, I, I just thought I was lazy. I had no idea that I was sick. Okay, well, I, I want to get up there because there's plenty of missiles up there, but I don't have high jump yet. Maybe I'll go get that. Must have carried on your mom's... 
<laughs> spelling gene. Good spelling can, or proper spelling can always be learned. If one makes it a priority. And I wanted to be a writer when I was young, so I made it a priority. Casperin says, can you go into more detail on the difference between lactose intolerance and the dairy allergy? What's actually going on under the hood, so to speak? Um, lactose intolerance just means your body can't process the, the food. So you'll get upset stomach, you'll, you know, have, have stomach and, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be a little impolite, stomach and butt problems. Um, Allergies are a little more serious. And my doctor was able to explain some of this to me. But not all of it. Does this one go all the way down? This one does not go all the way down. And I, I kind of remember the high jump being down here. Hope I'm right. In any case, got some missiles. Casper says, so with the intolerance, your body says, buh? But with the allergy, your body is like, nope. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's almost exactly it. That's great. My body both does not know how to break down dairy protein and freaks out in doing so, which probably is Crohn's disease. I'm not sure. I can't I can't state that for, for absolute sure, but I can say a lot of people in my family have it. Okay, this is... This is just more missiles, which I need. I've created a, a, a derail in chat about uh, flatulence. <laughs> well, my dad would be proud from beyond the grave. I've got everybody talking about poop. I'm not even I'm not even being sarcastic. That was that was considered polite dinner conversation in my house. I was the one who was always grossed out and didn't want to talk about it. But I went along with it or they would make fun of me. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Bridget says, we, we talk worse at dinner. Uh, yeah, I, I don't feel like being polite at the dinner table is a thing anymore. Or I feel like people have changed what they believe to be polite. And that certain things that were just taboo to talk about and you weren't supposed to ever talk about them. Now people don't really give a shit. We're, and, and some of that is really good. Some of that is, is we, you know, used to be really impolite to talk about uh, mental health. Oh, come on. There we go. And in many circles, it still is impolite to talk about mental health, but I think that's stupid. Because until everybody talks about it, we realize, oh, fuck, like... Like, 70% of us are on one form of crazy pill or another. Or ought to be.
there's a lot of people who aren't going to go get help. Because they see it as like, oh, I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy! When it, it really shouldn't be talked about that way. Well, I'm not getting the high jump before I go to the next thing. Because I don't remember where it is. There's a me from about three years ago who's in complete shock because I, I would beat this game about twice a year. And I'm getting old. I don't remember these things like I used to. Except for the original Zelda. <laughs> I still remember where most things are in that game. I remember where most things are in this game, just not all of them. Crystal says, can't move, hurts hella bad. Yeah, Crystal just had surgery. I'm glad I can be be with you in, 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 in this metaphorical hospital setting. Almost literal for you. Ishmael Wang says, I, it's the reason I don't really have an issue talking about my psych issues. Lots of people I know see me as super stable and whatnot, but I took a, you know, a lot of therapy and some medication. It's important to normalize it. Yeah, absolutely. I just name, name the demon. If you give it a name and point at it, it can't hurt you. I mean, it can, but you restrict its ability to hurt you. Missiles, I need life. You know what? I'm getting an energy tank in a minute here anyway. This is this is gonna be fine. No. This guy, yeah, do that, but this way. Here we go. All right. Oh, too low. Bridges says the music is pretty lit. I know, I, I love it. Before I even tackle the first boss, I got three energy tanks, the various suit, and the ice beam. <laughs> no, wait, it's amazing. I think so too. In fact, this this tune right here might be one of the reasons I like this series. I got into this series as much as I did, because I just heard this this song as a kid, and I was like, this sounds so rad. It sounds like it looks... <laughs> the game. What was the purple level called again? Uh, the uh, main areas of Metroid are Brinstar, which is where we are, Norfair, which I think is the purple one, and then... 
two sub areas, this one being Kraid, and then the one beneath Norfair being Ridley, named after their respective bosses. I recall there is a buttload of missiles over here. And then the last area is called Turian. T-O-U-R-I-A-N. Missiles are mandatory to beat Mother Brain. Um, yes they are. But there's ways past that. I don't know how people do it. But you can look up a video. Like, do, you know, Metroid World Record speedrun. You'll see how they do it. Sometimes it's glitching past walls. So I always do this wrong. One of these I'm not supposed to go into. And I go, I always go into them in the wrong order. So I will just take them as they come. And if I do have to do something twice, I have to do something twice. Or maybe it's just that that one doesn't have anything in it. Oh god, oh no, oh. Oh god, for the love. I'm gonna find my center on this one. This room sucks. Yes, this room does suck. Not a fan. I'm gonna ask your, you guys your opinion. All right, we're fun, we're gonna talk about social issues. Mm. Now, saying something sucks. I'm not a fan of that expression because what it really means and where it comes from is this sucks dick. I realize there's a young person in the room. But we're talking about what these things mean, and I think it's important to know, and I'm sure you already do. So, the implication being that that is a terrible thing. Now, the reason that is an implication is because it's something that only women and gay people do. Or bisexual, you know, whatever. And we've let that go, go on to a point that I don't think people even remember or know that that's what it means. So once we've gone that far, is it okay to say it again? And I haven't stopped saying it, but it does, you know, it is one of those jokes that's just, ha ha, aren't everybody but straight white men terrible? Ishmael Wang says, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's, I haven't stopped saying it yet, but I might. It has, like most swear words or curses or, you know, and I'm not saying it's a curse word, but like most things that, that are hard to get rid of, it's, it's, it has a lot of satisfying hard consonants. Wait a minute. I lost my concentration. Did I go all the way up? You guys are... Ishmael Wang says it's a tough one, but it's the inverse of don't be a dick. Yeah, that one... Ascribing... You know... Uh, ascribing, like, aggression to the penis is super problematic and something we shouldn't do. I remember there being way more missiles up there than there were. 
but we do it. And I, I'm having, you know, I'd have trouble getting rid of that one. And then somebody posts that, you know, every time I, I try to have this conversation online, some idiot comes in and posts that stupid clip from uh, Team America about uh, assholes, pussies, and dicks. And it's just, oh, come on, man. All of that was gross and bad. Casper, I have never heard a gay or bisexual man complain about use of the word, and I tend to listen to the community being marginalized. That doesn't mean no one has, but it doesn't quite have the organized response against it that others other words do. I agree. I think everybody's kind of sitting on it and going, eh, like I am. <laughs> I think really more to the point than trying to get rid of the word is to understand the mere fact of why it exists, the mere fa like the why of it originated with, aren't women terrible? Aren't everything they do bad? Aren't gay men bad because women are bad? Being gay in certain times in, in history it was seen as a very manly thing to do. Like, uh, Roman Legion. So the only, yeah. But people forget that. It's it's still, the, all the hate for, for gayness really stems from hatred of women in most cases. It's, you're, you're, you're a man, but you, you do the thing that, that women do, and you're, you're more like women than I am, and, and, they, you know, it, it's basically, masculinity as a construct is so fucking fragile to these people. That any, anything seen as attacking their manhood is like the worst thing you can say to them. Which is like, you're, at that point, you're, like, you're a bigger wuss than I am. Like, I, if, if you can't even hear a question about your masculinity without, like, freaking out, you're, you're the one with the problem, and you're the one who's too sensitive. <laughs> Boy, this guy just won't die. Ishmael says, assigning negative or positive connotation to genders bothers me, even if I'm guilty of using it a lot, though almost always negative connotations with penises, I try really hard to avoid other turns of phrase. As do I, and then uh, a lot of the MRA types are like, well, it's totally okay to say, call somebody a cock. Why, can, why can't I call you a cunt? And I'm dropping these words, you know, I've got the explicit tag on. We're talking about them. We're talking about the words themselves. It's important to say them. Except I still ain't gonna say the N-word. Uh... Crystal says they're secretly in love with the rod. Yeah, I know. I, I hate... There's a tendency going on right now to paint the, the most homophobic people as secretly gay. And there's enough truth in it that I don't know how big of a problem I have with that. But I will tell you what I do have a problem. Because a lot of those people who come out the loudest in, in against gay marriage, against gay rights, against uh, transgender inclusion, a lot of those people who come out the hardest against it turn out, you know, get caught in closets with rent boys or airport bathrooms, or... So it does happen. It's... it's There's that, that kind of self-loathing uh, homophobia. You know, it's a real thing. But what I do have a problem with is, haha, you're still... You're secretly... If you're homophobic, you're secretly gay. Because that still implies that being gay is a bad thing. 
That didn't go as planned. And Casper says, saying they're secretly gay itself <laughs> is itself marginalizing gay people. Yeah, yes. And then she says, yes, exactly that. So yeah, we agree. It's its own problem. Stephen Colbert recently did, recently did this with his Donald Trump joke about how, you know, he's secretly gay for Vladimir Putin. And it's like, dude, can you not? Can you not throw us under the bus to make your joke? Oh, crap. Oh, good. I didn't... At least I didn't get hit. That's this one. I used to know how to play this on this song on the guitar. And I could never play this part that's playing right now. <laughs> uh, at full speed. I always had to slow it down. Oh, crap. Oh, carp! Bridges says... Whoa, sorry. Bridges says, Well, if those people that think homosexuals are not okay, my friend is a lesbian and she's just like everyone else. Yeah, I mean... It's... It, it's, uh... It's going away. I will say, generationally... A uh, study was just recently done, and 50% of 15-year-olds polled said they had in the past been attracted to both a man and a woman. Now, they, they didn't necessarily describe themselves as gay or bisexual. Uh, I mean, of the same sex. Excuse me, I wasn't being clear. They didn't describe themselves necessarily as gay or bisexual, but they just said, like, yeah, I was totally, I have totally been attracted to members of my sex. And they didn't really see why it was a big deal, like people of my generation and older seem to. 50% of 15 year olds in America today. That's pretty awesome. So generationally, this is changing. Marriage equality passed, and we still have these horrible goblins trying to take it away. And they're never going to stop. They all... And it ain't about religion. It's never been about religion. That is a convenient excuse to, to, to thump your Bible and hate people. Because none of that shit's in the Bible. Sorry, but it just ain't. And even if it was, I don't see any of these people flipping out about any of the other stuff in Leviticus. I don't see them holding signs and, and going to tattoo rallies and tattoo conventions, because Leviticus said, like, two passages after the whole man shall not lie with man thing, he talks about inking your skin. And I once saw a guy with that tattoo, that Leviticus quote tattooed on his skin, and I, the irony was so lost on him. It ain't about religion, it never has been. Oh, God. Okay, well, I hope this is where I'm supposed to be, because I can't go back up. I don't remember this as well as I thought I did. Good lord, die! This seems like... this seems suspicious. to refill my water. I will be right back.
Hello again. Okay. Bridges does crickets chirping in background. Yeah. Sorry about that. So you say your friend is a lesbian. There's an interesting shift that's happened in my lifetime where even lesbians were like not okay to, you know, talk about. And then suddenly they were a little more accepted than gay men. And that was limited though, because they were, they were seen as acceptable if their existence was being used to cater to straight men. Straight men. So like, you know, showing a lesbian kiss on television and a lesbian kiss came first. I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure. I don't know who the first gay male kiss on TV was. You'd think I would. But the first, you know, lesbian kiss on TV was kind of meant to titillate men. You know, it, it, it wasn't just a celebration of queerness. And you saw that a lot in the 90s and the 2000s. I did not pay attention to where I was going and now I'm lost. I have no idea where I am. I have no way of getting over there. I have no idea where I came from, but I know I tried to go this way and failed, so let's just do it again. So there was this, like, wave of kind of acceptance of lesbians, but only as they existed to please gay men, or straight men, who thought two, two women kissing was hot. And when you tried to apply that acceptance into actual personhood, it dropped off. Casper says, May 24th, 2000, the season finale of Dawson's Creek features the first passionate kiss between two men to ever take place during prime time. Sweet. get up this way, but I don't know that I want to, because I don't know that I've been over here. Talking and, and playing... Talking, reading, and playing a Nintendo game all at the same time is harder than I thought. And also, I'm not as good at Metroid as I used to be. <laughs> First lesbian kiss was in 1991. Was it, was it on Roseanne? Might have been on Ellen? Neither. L.A. Law, yeah. Okay, wait a minute. This is where I got those missiles. I don't know nothing about no L.A. Law. Okay, now well, that's how I get back. First kiss between a homosexual couple airs on network TV. Aired on network TV during an episode of L.A. Law, Abby Perkins, played by Michelle Green, and C.J. Lamb, played by Amanda Donahue. Donahoe? As after Gab Abby gets a raise, advertisers threaten to pull their ads over the scene. Yeah, in 91, advertisers were like... You, you, can't, you can't even do... You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't have a gay kiss on TV. People are going to freak out. The religious, you know, folksy, religious folks and and intolerant Midwesterners are going to stop buying the products. And, and, and they were, like, people always talk about the, you know, oh, the flyover states wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't like it. And it's like, you're, you're giving Midwesterners, Southerners way too little credit. Because it's not them. It's it's it, there are intolerant people everywhere, and and 
Houston elected a lesbian mayor, like, not that long ago. Nine whole years earlier, we're willing to see women kiss, but not men. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, okay, I already went this way. I guess I gotta go this way and then go down. Or I'm just supposed to have the high jump by now, which is probably what it is. I'm gonna go get it. I've wasted a lot of time. But even, yeah, so nine years earlier, women could kiss on TV before men ever could. And by 10 years later, nine years later even, like by the end of the 90s, there are women making out in beer commercials and shit. Like it, it was, as long as it was presented as four men, it was totally fine. But once you, you just have queer people being happy, just, just a being happy and loving each other, that's the controversial one. It's pretty backwards. Similar for sex scenes in movies with the MPAA, the way they rate things is, is the woman enjoying herself? Then that's the problem. You can do just about anything in a sex scene except portray a woman enjoying herself and, and keep your, your PG-13 rating. What the what? <laughs> that power-up just turned into an enemy! Man, I'm down two whole life boxes. Never found Kraid. Metroid thinking, oh, I want to play something I'm really good at, and I'm not being very good at it today. Of course, that bears out, because I, I put on FTL thinking, it'll be funny how bad I am at FTL, and then I got to the very end of FTL for the very first time. Or for the second time. For the very first time, competently, with all the equipment I needed to maybe win, and then I didn't win. But yeah, you still see this. Is uh, is something okay to be shown on TV? Do straight white guys like it? Then yeah, we can use it to sell beer. We can use it to sell hamburgers and beer. If straight white guys don't like it, or some are put off by it, or in most cases, somebody vaguely has a suspicion that they might not like it, then you can't do it. I think the television industry as a whole underestimates what the American public is willing to put up with. Will and Grace, which for all of its faults, and it has many, including token gay best friend, um, it was like the most popular show in America for several years. <laughs> Bridges says, where is gender equality? We need this. Men keep using women for sex and pleasure. You know, in the Egyptian time, women were a top gender because uh, that's strength and priority. Yeah. Um, that's why feminism. Though one of the one of the dumbest, most misunderstood concepts about feminism is, is people go like, you, "Well, you want women to be on top." Where, where you know, I'm I'm not a I'm not a feminist because I believe in equality, and I'm like, that's literally the definition of fe feminism. And they're like, no, it isn't. You want women to be on top. You want women to, to, to be in control of men. And I'm like, that's a total, totally different thing. Has nothing to do with it. That's, that, that is not even close.
If you can answer the question, I believe men and women should be treated uh, equally. With a yes. Uh, congratulations, you're a feminist. Of course, it's, uh, uh, there's also the, I believe men and women, there's a crowd that thinks, I believe men and women are already, already fairly treated, or, for many, I think women are already unfairly, given unfair advantages over men. There, there are people who believe this, and they have never spoken to a woman ever. But there are women who believe it too. I just visited my mother recently, and she'd used the term female privilege no less than, like, six times. And every time I was just like, oh, facepalm. I don't know how to fix gender uh, inequality. If I did, I would have done it. But I do know that talking about it is the first step, because right now there are still tons of people who refuse to acknowledge that it's the kid, that, that there is any imbalance at all. When you need to look no further than the wage gap. Women make like, what, what is it, 33% less than men doing the same jobs. So clearly something's different. And once you bring that up with a lot of people, they go like, well, they're just worse at those jobs then, or they need to learn to negotiate pay better, or they need, they need, they need, they need. It's always something women did that made them be in the position they're in. And this goes right down to sexual assault cases where something happens to a woman at a party and they go, what were you wearing? How much were you drinking? You, 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 you. What did you do? How, how did you put yourself in this situation? And that's the first thing that always happens. It is assumed that it's the woman's fault. feel pretty good about this. Oh, no, 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 stay frozen. Aw. Oh, man. Bummer. No! Woo! Yep, those, those unicoi seahorse creatures are not spitting fire still. That is aces. Okay. I need a mulligan on this room. So that goes down, but I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty close to the screw attack.
But my fa my favorite part. Yes, screw attack. All right. My favorite part about a lot of these things is how self-justifying there are. Um, there's a law I talked about in an episode once called Moore's Law, which is states that um, the comments section beneath any article or video on feminism justifies feminism. <laughs> because look at anybody who wants to talk about it, and beneath them, in the comments section, is a bunch of frightened, angry men threatening them. <laughs> so, for evidence of gender inequality, you need look no further than to how fucking terrified a lot of men are at the idea of gender equality. So what I've, what I've found... And I, I, I haven't applied this to much. I haven't rigorously tested it. I'm not a, I'm, I, I haven't applied the scientific method. But what I've found is that with a shocking degree, anybody who's mad about another group and feels threatened by them tends to be a mediocre person who is threatened by the idea that they will actually be judged on the, their merits, on, on, on who they are and what they're like. So, like, when people talk about, oh, all the Mexicans are coming and taking the jobs, uh, that's not how jobs work. Nobody can take your job. Somebody can be better at you than your job or work for cheaper, but if, the, if it's better than you, then that's... You're not entitled to that job, you know, just because you're white, if somebody else is better. And if somebody else is able to work cheaper, then you gotta be mad at your boss. You don't be mad at the guy who's working cheaper. They're in a bad spotlight just like you. That's, that's not Mexicans taking jobs away. That's your boss being an asshole and paying slave wages to people who are desperate. So I pretty much got what I came for, but I, I know there's more missiles down here somewhere, but I know going right will take me back up. So let's go a little deeper into the beast. gone too far. I have gone too far. This is how I get to Ridley. Which I do not want to do. You guys have gotten quiet. What'd you do today, Joe? Played Metroid and ranted about capitalism. <laughs> Does this go up? It does go up. <laughs> Bridges says, we're watching intently. It's a good game. Even I'm not watching that intently. <laughs> I keep forgetting what I'm doing. 
Man, if you're only paying out five life at a time, that would take way too long. Okay, this is the... Alright. Okay, now I came from this way. I want to go back down. not been over here, or at least further that way. Yeah, this is new. Okay. By the way, Joe, Crystal's computer crashed, but she should be on again soon. Sounds great. I don't recall this room. Or its secret. But it must have one. I bet you it's over here. Maybe this was more fake lava. It was not. All right. Full energy, another energy tank, screw attack, high jump. I am in much better shape than the last time I tried to tackle Kraid. It's over here, right? How do I get up here? Ah. There we go. So, what did you do today other than something and playing Metroid? I don't know what that word is. Oh, writing. Writing and playing Metroid. Uh, boy, not much. I haven't started my new job yet. Uh, so... Mostly, I read about politics. <laughs> I do that too much these days. There's a healthy amount, 
that I think you should stay informed, but once it starts actively affecting your stress level, you might have to might might be time to go on a news diet. You meant ranted. Yes! <laughs> oh right, you're calling back from early why did I go left? Okay, this is why. Okay. I see. You were calling back to my I ranted about capitalism and played Metroid. Lava! You can't just jump out of it. It, like, grabs you and it's... It's annoying. Can't wait to meet you, Joe, because it's uh, it's gonna be a while because you have stuff to do for the next few weeks. I can't wait to meet you either. Ow. Oh god. I'm gonna have to open the the garage door because it's 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 sweaty under these lights. Bridges says, just realized I'm the only person watching. Did everybody else leave? You're the only person talking. For sure. ice beam that I already have.
know if everybody's gone, might be the perfect time for a break. <laughs> what should we talk about? It's so quiet. Yeah, totally. But I'm getting hot. And I think I should open the garage door. And that would be incredibly loud for you guys. <laughs> Open the garage door. Yes. Let me see. What time is it? You'll survive the noise. All right. Well, we're only about halfway through the stream. Probably a perfect time for an intermission. So I'm going to... I'm going to say see you in a bit.
And we're back. Yeah, I got your I got your request about music. I'll leave it on next time. There's no game. There is no game. What happened to the game? What on earth? How did this happen? I think I can fix it. I think I can fix it. was more than a little strange. So I think you're the only one here, Bridges. You get to pick the topic. I will follow your lead. Which I don't know if you're the, I don't know if you, I don't know that you're the only one here. But you are the only one talking. So far, I think I would definitely prefer to have a guest on Mondays when I'm on the couch. I can do PC games alone by myself on Tuesdays. You know, one night, one night a week of me not talking through the whole stream, I don't think is the worst thing. Because there are different people watch streams for different reasons. And I can cater to all of them on different days. But I think two days of the same thing, of just me playing a game by myself and responding to chat. I don't know about that. Have I ever played Skyrim? No, I, I'm not a huge fan of Bethesda. Um... Their games tend to feel a little, little more like... Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I haven't played Skyrim. I'll tell you that. But I'll tell you that their Fallout games feel like less like video games than they do like theme parks. And I've been playing Fallout since '97, so that kind of bothered me that they they bought the property and then really didn't do much with it. It's nothing like Fallout. Okay, okay. I don't, I don't know, I don't know Skyrim. And I've never, I've tried to play Oblivion, and, you know, to, to compare Elder Scrolls games, and it was intimidating. <laughs> I never knew, I, I never really knew what I was doing, and I only got about eight or nine hours out of it, and then I gave up. Though that open world thing, that is my style of game, I love that. Oblivion is way different too, yeah. I think, from what I've heard, they what they mostly have in common is that they are Elder Scrolls games, but that's about it. Okay, no, so... Hang on. I want to go right, because when I tried to go this way last time, I didn't have the high jump boots, and I got stymied! Oh my god, I'm stuck. Eh. 
but the one Bethesda game that I played a bunch of was Fallout 3, and I really, really, really didn't like it. The follow-up, Fallout New Vegas, was actually made not by Bethesda, but with Bethesda's permission, by the creators of the original Fallout, and it is just leaps and bounds a better game and a better experience. And that kind of soured me on Bethesda, so when Skyrim came out, I wasn't really interested. Though I do know... Wait a minute. Oh god. Okay, whatever. Nothing was up there. I'll go down then. Trying to think of another topic. I appreciate it, because I'm, I'm drowning here a little bit. I tried to go back and watch the Minecraft stream, and it wasn't really that interesting. <laughs> Which is fine. Solo streams tend to be that way. That's why I definitely prefer to have a partner, and I'm going to try to get your mom in here on, on more Mondays. But right now she is recovering from surgery. I liked the Minecraft stream, do it more often. Okay, absolutely. I just don't want that to be the show two days a week. Or three days a week, because Dell plays by himself too on Wednesdays. And he only plays Netrunner, he only plays that one game. <laughs> And yeah, I will totally play... I might even play Minecraft tomorrow, just because it's easy. But I did kind of run out of things to do. I know, I know she's recovering. She's in a lot of pain right now. <laughs> rest in peace, Crystal. Please get better. Now, usually people only say rest in peace when you're dead. Yes, I beg of you play Minecraft tomorrow. I might. I'm not going to promise. What I might do is... A friend of mine... Sent me a game... That was something like... Poop Soup? Or some absurd thing? And he wanted me to install it and play it on the stream. I might do that until I get bored and then just play Minecraft for the rest of the stream. But I haven't decided yet. Man, this lava and these bees. Space bees! I am beset by spa space bees. At least they're paying out life. This is a whole huge pain to get up, back up later. We don't have to... We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I honestly don't care what you do. I like all the games you play, even if I, I haven't heard of them. Well, thank you. All right, you ready for a boss fight? Because I am ready for a boss fight. Come on, guys, give me some life. I need life. Oh, my God. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, there we go. Some missiles. And you 
just don't want to give me that last missile, do you? All right, fine. Who needs you? Here we go. Sweet. Now there's a hidden... I, don't, I really didn't take as much damage as I thought I was gonna. But I still need to refill it. And there's a hidden... There it is! I can never figure out how best to get in here. No! Not what I wanted. Do the pose that makes you better at video games. That's... Always. <laughs> no! God! It's so annoying. Trick jump here. Like, it, it just doesn't work to roll over there, and then suddenly it will, and I don't know what I do to make it happen. Maybe rolling from this side? Yeah, there we go. Six energy, which I believe is the maximum you can have, but there are other energy tanks that will refill you. come in handy as you take damage. Uh, it's taking too long. Yeah, this is a huge pain, because if I screw up, I, I get knocked all the way down. Or I can get knocked all the way down. There we go. I also may not be able to watch the stream as much for the next two weeks. I will try to be on as much as possible, sorry. Don't worry about a thing. I'm playing video games, you know? It's, it's not... If nobody shows up, I'm still playing video games. <laughs> this isn't exactly turning a big crank all day. <laughs> In terms of, of would-be jobs. No! Oh, I came very close to falling all the way down. Actually, I want those. Oh, come on. Apologize for the sound, but my neighbor is pulling up. careful. Wait a minute. There's supposed to be a third one there. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, there it is. That would have been bad. Narrowly avoided. Got a little delay in the controls occasionally. It's annoying. Any other questions? Doesn't have to be about video games either. You can ask me about anything. Singing, I believe in you. <laughs> believe in Steve. I don't know that song, but it sounds great. It sounds positive. Wow, it's from Jack Splissai? I don't know what that is. It's called All the Way. All right. I'll look it up later. I remember. I don't have the world's greatest memory. He's on YouTube. Everybody's on YouTube. Whether they want to be or not. <laughs> oh, I need missiles, guys. Come on. I told you you could ask me anything and your response was to sing. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Is Crystal not coming back? Like, is she okay? Bridget says her computer is having problems. She feels like she said something stupid and is embarrassed. <laughs> and told me she's taking a break. <laughs> well, Crystal, if you can if you can see this, whether now or in the future, I don't know what you did. I don't think you embarrassed yourself. Oh, 
Hopefully she makes it back for the ending, because I think we're I think we're gonna beat the game. I think we're gonna make it from beginning to end within the three hours. So we've got one more boss fight. I might even be early. Got one more boss fight, and we can come back and do the end of the game. Oh, it, it'll be a bit. I don't want to rush her back. She just had surgery. If she, if she needed to go away and chill, she should go away and chill. I've been telling her that all day. Question or topic looks in the sky and thinks. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Like like when you're when you're on the spot. When I I can't think of anything, and I'm you know I'm the it, it's my show. I'm supposed to. That's why I liked having a conversation partner. But Dell, Dell had to go and quit. played a VR kind of game, if not, you should, and play Resident Evil 7. It's awesome on the VR. Uh, I get motion sick. Um, I have no depth perception, and I mean that literally. My eyes, uh, because I had a lazy eye growing up, my eyes are further in. Uh, they rest further inward than most people's do. And so I don't have any depth perception, and so any 3D experience is going to make me incredibly nauseous. I did one at the EMP a couple years back that was Game of Thrones themed. And, uh... <laughs> Excuse me. And basically you just go up a ladder and then fall off the, the, the wall, if you're familiar with Game of Thrones. And, uh, I, I nearly vomited. Basically, the only way I'd be able to do VR is if they put the same image in both eyes, which I'm sure there's a setting for, or there will be in the future. But they try to do stereoscopic 3D, which just, the way my eyes rest together, does not work for me. And my brain doesn't know what to do with it. And I vomit. <laughs> okay, well, I don't... I don't care enough to go keep going that way. <laughs> it's well made. It's really well made. I bet you it is. It's Capcom. There are no slouches.
What? What is going on? I keep hitting things and they're not dying. Oh, I want that one. That's going to be a big one. Yep. That was 20 life. Come on. Come on, guy. It's a horror game. I love horror games. I literally don't get scared and I don't get nightmares. I do. I'm trying to think of a horror game I liked. Can't remember any. Eternal Darkness. I loved Eternal Darkness on the GameCube. Which was kind of like a Resident Evil, but it was about, like... Uh... Like, Elder Gods. Like... Uh, Lovecraftian horror. Net Jogging says Soma is really good. Do I know you, Net Jogging? Oh, this is one of those rooms that's just here to tell me that there's a secret room somewhere else. Eh. Waste of time. Don't think so. Okay, fair enough. Always good to have a stranger around. Hello! Me and Bridge is here playing Metroid and talking social issues. Well, I'm, I'm doing the Metroid. In every old Nintendo game that I'm good at and remember, there's always one area I don't... I just have a total blind spot for. And in... Legend, the original Legend of Zelda, I think it's level 6. For some reason, I just can't remember most of level 6. And in this one, it's, it's Ridley's area. I just never know where to go. But I know it's not that big, so it ain't really gonna matter. But yeah, Eternal Darkness had this really cool sanity system where, you know, most games have, like, your life and your mana or your life and your, you know, your armor or whatever. This one had life, mana, and sanity represented as three colors, red, blue, and green. And if your sanity meter got low enough, the game would start screwing with you. Like, you'd, you'd walk into a room and it would say, controller disconnected. And you'd be like, what? No! And, and the, your character would die. And then you'd pop back to reality, and your character that you're playing would be like, This isn't really happening! It was so cool, just having a game screw with me like that. But it was, it was a scary-ass game. Whoa, I made it to the boss. How long have you been doing this channel, and what inspired it? Uh, the YouTube channel I've been doing since late 2015, 15? And it was basically, I wanted to make a talk show, but I was like, everybody already has the show to just talk in movies. You know, so what should mine be? And I was way big into... You know, I was in college at the time, and I was taking all these these courses that had, you know, about communication and basically all the the courses that teach you to be an insufferable feminist. <laughs> and uh, okay, I'm stuck. 
And so my doctor misses my ex-wife, who is just a lovely person and a, one of the smartest people I know, was like, well, you love analyzing movies and talking about them in terms of, like, societal, you know, damage that they could cause, you know, and, and how certain ideas just need, we need to re-examine in, in terms of things like that. And you, you love talking about that. Why not do that? And sure enough, it turned out to be really fun. I haven't made a lot of videos because it's an incredible amount of work. <laughs> it's just, truth be told, it takes a long time to edit something as complex as this. But the live stream has only been around for a few weeks. I think we're on week th four. And that was just basically like, I started watching other people doing live streaming and I was like, I've got the green screen set up already. And it's easy, and it's content that I wouldn't need to post-produce, so I could actually churn out some stuff. Without, you know, having to take an entire week of my life <laughs> away for a... a ten minute, you know, ten to, to fifty minute video... Video essay breaking down a movie that nobody is going to watch. I mean, granted, everybody's... The, the adage is you work for you work for 10 years to become an overnight success. So you keep making stuff and you keep making stuff and you keep making stuff and finally the day you're discovered. You make that one video that everybody's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta see this. But you gotta keep making stuff to do it. And I keep letting my personal life get in the way. You know, where uh, right when I started the show, my dad got cancer and died. And so I stopped producing as often. And then I started getting back into a groove, and I started making some stuff, and I introduced, a, you know, a second show that, I, that was only like three to five minutes long and wouldn't require anything but me writing it and saying it into a camera. I wouldn't need to, like, edit a bunch of film footage in it. And I started, you know, getting doing those, and then uh, I got divorced. <laughs> Which, again, super amicable. We're still friends. She came over yesterday, and we went we, we went and did errands together like we were still married. She was just like, it's super hot. You want to get in my air-conditioned car and go help me buy a box fan? And it was like... <laughs> it, was, it was funny doing married people things with my ex-wife. Um, you know, but even then, it's still... It's, it, you know, it's 12 years of my life I spent with this person, and now they're gone. And it's, it's, it's distressing. So I let that kind of break it in too. You know, kind of kind of break the, the cycle of producing content too. And I've never really gotten a good rhythm going. What I ought to do is what the best people do, which is an episode every month, you know, just deadline it. Is, you know, Movie Bob does one review a week and one in Bob We Trust every week. Every week, every week, every week. And he never misses a week. And that's how these people eventually get discovered and big, is, is you do one every week, you get better at it, first of all. And you do enough of them, eventually one's going to hit. So to answer your question, I, I'm, 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 uh, yeah. My wife pitched the idea, I loved it. And I'm not bigger than I am because I, A, don't know how to market myself, B, am doing a series of videos that a lot of people are just ideologically opposed to. And three, uh, I've been too lazy. I haven't been regularly producing content. But I've got one, I've got an episode coming out soon. I'm about... Looks to be like it's going to be about 40 minutes, and I'm about 9 minutes done. I've gotten the whole ass assembly, assembly cut done, which is basically just take out all the ums and uhs and cut to the proper thing in the proper moment, but I need to, you know... There's a lot more to editing than that. <laughs> a lot of people just do that and then release a show, and that's how they're able to do one a week.
I'm doing whole video essays, not just a review of a movie. So there's a lot more work to it. So this is it. We're, uh... We're on our way to the end of the game. Almost certainly going to <laughs> not hit my three hours this week, which is okay. I can end the show a little early, or we can sit around and talk. Is this right? I think I went too far. I stopped paying attention because I was talking. If there's a ceiling here, I went too far. There is not. Okay, good. Sit around and talk. It'd be fine if I had something to talk about. I'm struggling with that even now. Even before we're... <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to prolong the episode. Is this it? This is it. Please, I beg of you, stay for four hours. This was not it. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but there are, even, there are limits. Nose itches. Oh, hey. Play another game. I might. If I beat this, I might just put on something else that I can noodle around in. To kill time. These are the missiles I was looking for earlier in the game, and I don't know why I couldn't find them then. But I imagine it had something to do with half paying attention and half talking. <laughs> okay, it's not that one. more of myself than that. Okay, looks like 215 is how many missiles I have. I know you can beat the game with 205, but I also know if you run out, you're completely screwed. <laughs> you have to, you have to nail it. So we'll see. This could be two and a half hours of me getting to the end of Metroid and dying. But we're one life. If, if I die, that's it. Though I appreciate your enthusiasm for wanting me to stretch the show out. It's infectious. Okay, yeah, confirmed. I have a max missile count of 215. Which means, at the end of the game, I don't get to make very many mistakes.
There. I don't know why I'm spending the whole stream leaning forward like an idiot. <laughs> oh. One more. Ah. See? I didn't even notice, but I, I leaned forward again. <laughs> I mean, I did notice, but... I wonder why I keep doing that. It's not comfortable. It's hurting my back. <laughs> bunch of doors down here that require missiles and I am pretty determined to not die yes oh you're the only person here again that's fine keep it low pressure There are less people around to watch me fail. Fewer, fewer people, excuse me. Oh my god, somebody give me a missile. You're, you're killing me with this. Ugh. Nothing. No missiles. <laughs> This is aggravating. Your dog scared the crap out of you. That's no good. Especially if you really meant that. He was by my feet, and when I stretched, I accidentally kicked him. I feel so bad. Yeah, yeah. I know that feel. I, I hate when you accidentally step on their tail, and they let out that, that, that awful... Yelp. For the love of God, somebody drop a missile! What is even happening here? It's been minutes! Okay, something's wrong. I, I need to, like, leave the room and come back, or... My dog is so small that it's basically impossible to step on his tail. Instead, you end up stepping on him. Yeah. So this is the room I was talking about with the bosses you beat. And then you... Once you beat him, the bridge. But you can, you can take an enemy in here and freeze it. One of these guys. No, no missile. Finally! Jeez! Two in a row, too. There we go. Okay. Let's do this. End of the game.
You can get stuck down there and die. It sucks. I've done it. These are Metroids. And they will wreck you. <laughs> I don't even bother fighting them, I just freeze them and run. Okay, just in case. I'm gonna go get those ten missiles back. Really? There we go. <laughs> it's like, I only need one more. Now you're gonna stop? And I wish I could remember how many missiles you need to win. I hope I have enough. I didn't really go hunting for them. cool sound when you walk on them it's like <laughs> Stay down there. No, no! Mm. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Here it is, Mother Brain.
if I don't shoot these down really fast, they start to grow back, and that wastes a bunch of missiles. I'm at, like, down two energy boxes. Not the best. go by are really awesome. I could freeze them. Oh, hit the wrong... Whoa, 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 hey! I can't move. There we go. I'm screwed. I'm completely screwed. Yep, there's no way out of this. I'm gonna die, and this is the end of the game. That is so disappointing. Oh, wow. Okay, 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 okay! Let me up, let me up, let me up! <laughs> oh! Oh! This is, this is just not, not great. Okay. I have a chance. I have a chance. I gotta stop taking hits. I gotta freeze those things. Set. Get out fast. Yes, y yes, please. <sighs> yeah, that was incredibly disappointing because that had nothing to that my controller cut out when I was jumping up there, and then I just couldn't move, and I got knocked down into lava. There, it happened again. I wonder if my batteries are getting low. Oh, God. This is not easy. Now the big twist, something none of us, all of the, the, the pronouns in the Metroid instruction book refer to Samus as a he, but if you beat the game in under a certain amount of time, this happens. Samus was a woman the whole time. Blew our little minds when we were kids. Of course, this also started a, uh, uh, as, as progressive and awesome as I think that was, this started a terrible trend of showing women's bodies to be a reward. It's like, that one, that was fine. That was just, look, it's a woman. But if you get to the end credits and hit start, you get to play through the entire game again in that leotard. And if you beat the game in under three hours in that leotard, now she's in a bikini. So it kind of, eh, yeah, one step forward, two steps forward, one step back kind of thing, where you, uh, look, female protagonist, but we're going to sexualize her in 8-bit graphics, you know, in the 80s. So that, that started pretty early on. 
is beat the oh man did you hear if you beat the game real quick she gets naked like there are rumors about that immediately So we did it! And we were rewarded with this awesome end credits song. Sorry, I just really like this music. <laughs> okay, so we did it. I'm going to load up another game. I'm going to have to take a break, but it's already 640. Yeah, I'll do it anyway. Just load up something dumb and play it for 10 minutes or whatever. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. Well, the only person in chat signed off, and uh, it's 
I'd, I'd kind of like to be done. I played and beat Metroid in less than three hours. I'm pretty proud of myself. It was uh, wonderful having you all, the few of you who were here. And thank you, everybody. Good night. Yep. Forgot my mouse.